Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger, thank you so much for the wisdom you've shared with us over the years. This is Stephen Wood from New York. And um, Mr. Buffett, thank you very much for your feedback, your very generous feedback last August on the book that I'm writing. I just had one follow-up, if I may. In studying the most significant value creators of all time, it is very evident that the major compounding effect happened later, at the later stages of the careers, or in Vanderbilt's case, even beyond his own career. So your recent investments have suggested to me that you are designing Berkshire to being a steady compounding machine that should continue to create value for a very long time. Would you both please elaborate on this compounding machine and the machine's ability to continue to adapt to keep this value creation durable? Uh, and then is this legacy one of your sort of primary motivations when you wake up every day? I would say it's the, it is the primary motivation, but it's been that for a very, very, very long time. No matter what was going right in my life, the things that were going badly, for sure, I, I would not feel good. You know, I don't need to be spending my time working on something that, that makes me feel bad about the results. You know, when we get through, so, I, and it's 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 something that's doable. I mean, the culture is stronger now than it was 10 years ago, and it was stronger then than 10 years previously. It moves slowly, but it goes in the right direction. And when we get chances to deploy the capital, we. We've always tried to make any entity, whether it was the partnership originally or the or Berkshire <coughs> now or Blue Chip Snaps when we owned it or, or even diversified retail, we, we wanted them all to be compounding, in effect, be compounding machines. That's why people gave us capital. That's why we put our own capital in. And if we failed at it, we, feel like we really felt like we'd failed. It didn't make any difference how much money we made from fees or anything like that. We, we, we knew what our yardstick was. And, and so that... That will continue. I think Berkshire is better situated than it's ever been, except for the fact that size is a drag on performance. And I, I probably wrote that 40 years ago. I wrote it actually when I closed the partnership to new money when we had like $40 million in it. I just said that, uh, that really the new, that additional capital would drag down returns from a $40 million base. So you can imagine how I feel with it. $368 billion base of capital in Berkshire now. But this culture is special. It can work. It won't be the highest compounder by a long shot against many other businesses. I think it won't be, it'll be one of the safest ways to make decent money over time. But uh, that will depend on the people that follow us. Charlie? Well, we came a long way from very small beginnings. And the fact that it slows down a little when it becomes monstrous is not my idea of a huge tragedy. I, and I think we will continue to do very well in the future. We had nothing like the energy operation you know, 20 years ago. And it's a powerhouse. We had nothing like Kevin's operation in home building 30 years ago, and it will soon be the biggest. Well, even now it's bigger than anybody else in the country if you count both types of high housing, isn't it? Houses? I think so. And we have a lot going for us, and I'm satisfied. I think it's going to continue reasonably. And it would ruin our life if we did it terribly. <laughs> So that, that's what we wake up thinking about in the morning. But uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in a business where I was going to let down other people. And I think you'd be crazy to do something like that, even if you weren't rich in 88. <laughs> so uh, it, but we are motivated to have something that, that is regarded as, as something different than others. And, and, and we're actually in a world where so much money is institutionalized you know, uh, I, I like the idea of having somebody that's actually owned by individuals in, in very significant part who basically trust us and, and uh, you know, don't worry about what the next quarter's earnings are going to be. I, I, think it, I think it's different than much of capitalism, and I think it's a, something that Charlie and I feel good about. Additional Charlie? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. My name is Bill He, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. You two make up an iconic duo, and growing up, I found your investment strategies very admirable. And so my question is, how do you deal with conflicts when they arise between the two of you? Are you applying personal conflicts in terms of doing something ourselves versus having Berkshire do it, or, or uh, oh, between the two of you, I'm just, and, uh, Charlie and I, literally, and people find this hard to believe, but in 60 years, we've never had an argument. We have disagreed about things, and we'll probably keep occasionally disagreeing about this or that, but if you define an argument as something where emotion starts entering into it, or uh, uh, anger or anything of the sort, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. I, I think that uh, Charlie is smarter than I am, but I also think that there are certain things where I've spent more time on him than he has, and, and sometimes we both think we're right, and generally I get my way because Charlie is willing to do it that way, and he's never second-guessed me when things have been wrong, and I wouldn't dream of second-guessing him if he were doing something that was wrong, so it turned out to be wrong. It, we, we, we will we'll never have a conflict, basically. Charlie? Well, the issue is how long how we get along. The issue is how is it going to work when we're gone? And the answer is fine. It's going to work fine. Yeah. We're lucky that, you know, I ran into him when I was, what, 28 years old. And I, and I both worked in the same grocery, grocery store in the grew up less than a block away from where I now live and everything, but I did not know who Charlie Munger was until I was 28. But, uh, but clearly we're in, in sync in how we see the world and we're in sync on business decisions, basically. Charlie would do fewer things than I would, but that's because I'm spending my time on this while he's designing dormitories or something. And we both, we both keep busy in our own ways and we have a lot of fun uh, dividing the labor like we do. But, uh, you really, you really want to work. I mean, having the right partners in life, particularly the right spouse, but particularly the, having the right partners in life is enormously important. I mean, it's just, it's it's more fun with a partner, both in personal life and, and and in business life, and and you probably get more accomplished too. But you just have a better time. It would not be any fun to do work in a little room and make a ton of money trading around securities, but never, never working with another human being. So uh, I recommend finding, well, Charlie gave some advice in the movie, finding well, the, best, the best person will have you or something like that. It, yeah. uh, <laughs> sort of a limited objective. Uh, but, but it's not hard to be happy if you're a collector and don't run out of money. Collecting is intrinsically fun. Just think, who, how many people who you know in your whole life who were collectors who didn't run out of money, who weren't happy collecting. That's what we've been collecting all our lives. It's a very interesting thing. There's always a new route to be turned over. And it's interesting. Yeah, in a certain way we've collected friends that make our lives better and that we have a good time with. And uh, it's, it's very important you know, the who you select as your heroes or your friends. And, and uh, I've, I've been lucky in this. I mean, it was only because of a doctor named Eddie Davis and his wife that Charlie and I even met. And, but if you, if you keep doing enough things, some will work out very lucky. And, and uh, the best ones are ones that involve lifelong involvement with, with other people. But, uh, and uh, we've got some in our, some of our directors, a number of our directors that have had similar impacts on me. So I, uh, I recommend that, uh, that uh, you look for somebody better than you are and then try to be like they are. It's funny, you know, we've lost people along the way. And when I lost Warren's secretary, I thought, my God, she was so wonderful, Gladys. We'll never get another one. Becky is better. <laughs> and then we, we had Vern McKenzie, who was a wonderful chief financial officer. He's gone, and, and the incurrent incumbent is better. We've been very lucky. 
and maybe the shareholders will be lucky a few more times. <laughs>